My dear friends in Christ, today's gospel is a parable of our Lord, of the sower sowing the seed. And the parables are wonderful lessons brought home with a story. St. Luke's gospel, today is taken from St. Luke, has more parables than any other gospel. In fact, I think something like twice as many as the other gospels put together. And St. Luke tells us some of those wonderful, beloved parables that are not mentioned in any other gospel, such as the parable of the uh, Good Samaritan or the parable of the prodigal son. At any rate, St. Luke records this gospel about the sower and tells us that our Lord gave the explanation himself to the disciples. But our Lord didn't always give the explanation. And even in today's gospel, when he gave it to the disciples, he said, to you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to the rest in parables. In other words, I'm going to tell you exactly what it meant, but the others are going to have to figure it out for themselves, more or less, is the meaning there. But then our Lord goes on to quote from Isaiah the prophet. He says, to the rest in parables that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now this is a little disturbing at first, because it almost sounds as though our Lord doesn't want them to be able to figure it out and bring about their salvation. So we go to the fathers of the church who explain the fathers of the church, meaning those great early writers like St. Augustine and St. Ambrose and, and St. Gregory the Great and so forth. And what do they say about these words? What does that exactly mean? Hearing that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. And they explain it they say several things, but one of the things they point out is that by our Lord telling the truths in parables that are therefore a little bit hidden, the people who fail to cooperate with the word of God, who fail to put it in practice, are less guilty than if our Lord had been open and plain in explaining his teachings. So a little less culpability. So that is at least one of the reasons uh, the fathers give to explain what our Lord meant by that. But notice at the beginning of the gospel, it says at that time, a, when a very great crowd was gathering together and men from every town were resorting to Jesus, he told them this parable. We know that the people thronged to hear our Lord preach. They were in admiration of his teaching. They said among themselves, never has a man spoken like this man. St. Mark has an interesting quote in his gospel. He said, the mass of the people liked to hear him. And this brings up a good question we can ask ourselves. To what degree do I like to hear the word of God? Does it delight me to hear the word of God explained? to listen to Catholic sermons. Nowadays, we have modern technology, and we ought to use this modern technology to spread and promote the faith as much as we can. And I asked the gentleman who started the website called, and it's easy to remember, traditionalcatholicsermons.org. The man who started this website, I asked him some years ago about how many downloads he gets per month in hundreds hundreds and he said ironically now I don't know if this is still the case but at the time that I asked him several years ago he said the greatest number of downloads were from people in Russia and in China if you can imagine so it's wonderful that we use again the technology available to spread the faith such as recording and putting up, making available sermons. And I know of housewives who've told me they're doing, they're preparing a meal or doing the dishes and they have a, a, you know, a computer there where they can put on the website and listen to a sermon while they're doing their work or download it, listen in the car. So it's a wonderful thing to do. And this is what we see with these common people. They liked to hear our Lord speak. In fact, 
on a couple of occasions, the people were so enthralled with our Lord's teaching that they followed him out into a desert place and were totally unmindful of bringing provisions. And so our Lord had to multiply the loaves and the fishes to feed the multitude on two different occasions, thousands of people, because he did not want to send them away fasting, as our Lord said, lest they faint in the way. But here they followed him out into a desert place because they just wanted to hear what he had to say. They delighted in listening to the word of God. Now, sometimes people will say, well, how do I know that I am making spiritual progress? How can I know that I'm doing well spiritually? Well, there are different signs, but one of them is this. Do I like to hear the word of God preached? Do I like to hear the explanations in the sermon of the gospel, of the epistle and gospel? Does it delight me to hear? Or is it boring? Am I looking at my watch, hoping it'll get over soon? This is something we should ask ourselves. Do I enjoy hearing the word of God explained and preached? And we see here the people delighted in hearing our Lord's teaching. But getting back to the idea of parables, our Lord also in teaching the truths of the faith by means of parables gave us or gives us a way of remembering these truths because we remember the stories. So we read the parable, we remember the parables, and then by calling to mind the parable, we call to mind the lesson it contains. And the lesson here, of course, is cultivating the word of God. Our soul is like the soil. Here the sower goes out to sow the seeds and he casts the seed over the earth, over the field. And the seed either germinates and brings forth fruit or it doesn't, depending on the type of soil. Have we not often experienced that? Where we try to explain the Catholic faith to our relatives, to our friends, to different individuals, and sometimes it seems they don't seem to understand what is so clear to me. How can they not see this, we ask ourselves. Well, maybe the soil is too packed down. It is not cultivated. So in other words, they're not receptive because perhaps, as our Lord points out in the gospel, their mind is too cluttered with the things of the world or too attached to worldly things, too much taken up with those cares, not attentive to the things that pertain to the soul. And that is why prayer and a good spiritual life are more important so that when we do hear the word of God, we will receive it and that it will bear fruit. We will receive it in the right way and that it will bear fruit. So prayer is indispensable. It's not just a matter of hearing the truth. We have to have the grace to put it in practice. And so when you strive to explain to someone else, say a Novus Ordo Catholic, about the truths, about the, the, the errors of Vatican II and the truth of the traditional Catholic faith, remember to pray for those individuals, not just to give them something to read or speak to them, but pray for them. Because prayer brings the grace to receive the word of God, and that it will be cultivated, that it will blossom and grow forth and produce abundant fruit. And of course, the best prayer of all that we can encourage people to use is that of the rosary, to remember to pray the rosary in our homes, especially together. Remember the words of our Lord, where two or three are gathered together, I am there in the midst of them. So pray the rosary as a family, the family rosary. And this will be especially a means of obtaining grace to not just hear the word of God, but to put it in practice in our lives. We want to be like that soil that produced 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, that produced abundant fruit because it was fertile ground and not like that which, on which the seed is trampled underfoot or has the thorns, etc., or the rocky soil, and it doesn't produce fruit. So let us then delight in hearing the word of God, 
listening to the word of God and putting it in practice in our lives. Remember that as St. Paul says, faith comes by hearing. And our Lord told the apostles, go forth and teach all nations. This is something we say to Protestants who are so glued in on the Bible and of course their own false interpretation of the Bible is that our Lord didn't establish a Bible reading church. This is not in any way disparaging the written word of God, which we use and preach and read in the mass. But the point is our Lord told the apostles to teach, teach the faith, because when we hear it, it sinks into our heart. And then we must receive it with humility and with prayer, with a docile heart, so that the soil will be cultivated and the seed will bring forth fruit. Let us delight in hearing the word of God, but especially put it into practice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.